Good evening and welcome to the planning committee Thursday this time, the 4th of January 2024. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you that are here tonight and for those that are joining us at home, um, our officers and members of the press. Item one, apologies. Uh, I have apologies from Councillor Burnett Faulkner, substituted by Councillor Sweeney, and I've also had apologies from Councillor Jones, but no substitute. Are there any other apologies? Look around, that's a negative. So moving on to the next item of business. Uh, declarations of interest. Have we got any declarations of interest from members here tonight in the agenda? I look around and that's uh, a negative. Can't see anybody identifying. So that's sent. Item three of the agenda. Minutes of the previous meeting. Um, can we agree that that's a true and accurate record? If not, can we identify why now? Now, show of hands, please, in acceptance of that as a true and accurate record. Thank you, that's unanimous. Moving on to item four of the agenda, this application for major development, Ham Baker Slow Control Garner Street, Etruria. And I believe we've uh, presentation on that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So this is an application for the change of use of the site, formerly known as Ham Baker Slow Control. So this had a B2 use of like industry and the application seeking a change of use to B8 for storage and distribution. The site is located within the urban area. However, a small section of the eastern edge of the site, so I'll just trying to show my cursor here, just around this location, falls within the boundary of Stoke City Council. Prior to the submission of this application, the site was cleared of all buildings, with the exception of this one here centrally, which was retained. It did become apparent to officers during the consideration of the application that the site has been brought into use and is being operated. Um, so the application is now for retrospective planning permission. The site is accessed via Garner Street. To the west, we have the A500 carriageway and the slip road onto the roundabout with the junction of Etruria Road, the A53, and then to the east of the site, we have the railway line. So this image is taken looking north into the application site from Garner Street. To the west, you can see the slip road here leading off from the A500. And then beyond this site here is the, the railway boundary. You can see here the modular building that's been installed to support um, the operations of the site. So again, this is another image taken from Garner Street looking northwards, but you can see here the extent of hard standing that's being used to support the, the parking of the HGV vehicles and staff. We've got the building here in a central position that's been retained and modified. And then again, just another image here, slightly towards the east of the site. So you can see the railway line and the infrastructure just beyond the site boundary there. Hard standing here again for, for the parking of vehicles. So on this proposed site plan, you can see centrally the building that has been retained. This is used for palletized storage. And there's been a small lean to extension here on the west elevation. The modular building, you can see just here, it's just by the site entrance. And then the remaining, uh, the remainder of the site is all hard surface divided for parking for HGVs, trailer cabs and staff vehicles. So this is an elevational drawing of the building that's been retained in the central position of the site. The vehicle openings have been modified slightly, but all to use for access of HGVs to access um, palletized goods that are stored within the within the building. And then these are plans, elevations and floor plans of the modular building. So within there, you've got offices, a meeting room, and then kitchen and toilet facilities for staff. The site's located within the urban area and has historically been occupied for commercial purposes. The operations from the site, um, in your office's opinion, would continue to provide economic benefits for the borough in a location that would be deemed sustainable for development of this nature. There are no objections in terms of impacts on the wider landscape. The site by its very nature is industrial, incited in a 
position between large trunk roads and railways. There's only been a small amount of new development introduced, all of which are considered to be appropriate in their location and design. With regards to highway safety and traffic, the transport statement has confirmed that the site can suitably accommodate the proposed use without any adverse impact on the highway network. There's ample parking and manoeuvring space for vehicles, as well as a safe and suitable access point. And there are no objections from the county council as the highway authority or Highways England, who are responsible for governing the operations of the A500. The site is not within a flood zone or an area of critical drainage problems. Um, so no objections from the LLFA, the local flood authority have been received. And so on that basis, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I believe we have a, a speaker who is in favour of the project, uh, the agent, Mr Wolf. Would you like to come forward, sir? Mr Wolf, just to remind you, you've got up to five minutes to make your case. And that's your sole contribution to the, whole, the evening's proceedings. You may start when you're ready. Press the button at the front, yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, councillors, officers, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would firstly like to um, thank your officers uh, for working proactively um, with us to bring this application to you uh, this evening with a recommendation of approval. Um, I'm pleased that we're in a position where there are no objections from any statutory consultees. Uh, just by way of background, you uh, may be aware that uh, Eddie Stobart's operated from their previous site adjoining Twyford Road, Handchurch, near Junction 15 on the M6 for about 16 years. Uh, however, they were looking for a new larger base, which would allow continued investment and expansion to safeguard the existing jobs uh, for 150 people employed at that site uh, and create 75 more. Uh, the Hambaker site was identified as a perfect location. It's well connected to the strategic network, well-resourced employment opportunities, it is in the North Staffordshire Regeneration Zone. It is planning policy compliance and uh, in a pro-investment authority. The previous business at the site had sadly gone into administration. Um, the proposal before you this evening provides new investment into the site, aids regeneration of the area, and it keeps the Stobart business in the region. Stobart Managing Director Neil Robotham highlighted the benefits of the site in a press release at the end of September, and I quote, North Staffordshire is a great place to do business. The site in Newcastle is perfectly located. We hope by securing successful planning permission, we will also be securing and creating many jobs for years to come. Uh, in the same press release, uh, Councillor Simon Tagg voiced his support for the scheme, stating that choosing to locate to the borough shows the confidence that companies have in the council to support business and help grow the local economy. It is fantastic news that Stobart have been able to find their ideal new depot in Newcastle, helping secure jobs in the current challenging economic climate. And your local member of parliament, Aaron Bell, also welcomed the move. He said, it is great to see a national brand like Stobart wanting to stay in North Staffordshire and find a new depot in Newcastle under Lyme. Securing the business and jobs is a testament to our plan to grow the economy, support residents and local businesses. To put some uh, broad numbers to these statements, the, the direct and indirect benefits of securing an anticipated 225 jobs in the North Staffordshire region will be worth in the region of tens of millions a year to the economy every year. There will also be receipts of nearly a quarter of a million pounds from business rates. And to expand on the points about the location, um, as you've heard, the site adjoins the A500 with vehicles entering the site via the A53 junction on a Truria roundabout and rejoin the A500 along Garner Street on the next slip road to the south. Therefore, there'll be no adverse impact to the borough highways and no entry or exit within the city or to the west side of the A500. As well as highways, all other technical issues such as air quality, flooding and environmental protection have been assessed by your officers and with no objections raised. In addition, impacts to network rail and the strategic network have been considered by the relevant consultees, again with no objections. I'd like to suggest that the scheme is a positive development for Newcastle under Lyme. It aids regeneration, creates long-term investment 
and secures jobs and economic growth for the future. I hope that committee members are able to support this application. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. You may join your seat. Thank you. Before I open it up to members for comment, um, I would just like um, to check with our officers that we uh, that we're satisfied in terms of the access uh, and exit arrangements, in terms of the amount of traffic that we're going to have at that point and on the roundabout, that that's going to be robust enough to take the traffic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So it is supported by a transport statement, which has accounted for a worst case scenario of a B8 use on a site of that this scale. That's found that there would be an additional 15 two-way trips in the PM weekday peak period, which equates to around one vehicle every four minutes, I believe the statement suggested. Um, the Highway Authority have had sight of this statement, as have the as of Highways England, and are happy with um, those additional vehicle movements. There is, when I went out on site, there is a sign. Um, just go to the plan. Can't quite see it. There is signage just uh, at this point here, directing um, HGV vehicles to continue south down to Garner Street to go towards the M6. Um, in both directions and then towards the A50. So that junction capacity, in the opinion of the Highways Authority, wouldn't be significantly impacted. Thank you for that. And now we're uh, opening up to members for comments. Um, sorry, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Will the um, HGVs actually be using the junction with the E road, um, as in going underneath the flyover and coming out onto the A53, or will they not be going that way? Thank you. I'll come back on that. Thank, thank you. Um, there's nothing within the submission that indicates that the vehicles won't be travelling in a particular direction. From when I was out on site, it appears they are being encouraged in order to get to the M6 and the A50 to continue down Garner Street. But at the same time, when I was on site, there were HGV vehicles coming out onto Garner Street and onto the A53. Um, it, it's not unusual for HGVs to use that junction because the previous use was industrial, so there will have been vehicles of that size using the junction before anyway. Um, the development will be increasing the number of vehicle movements slightly, but not to a point where we feel there's going to be a, a negative impact. Thank you. Having lived on Garner Street, um, that junction was always a bit of a problem. And um, there has been an objector, hasn't there, who's um, commented that that could cause difficulties because I would assume HGVs are quite slow at pulling out there and you've got traffic coming quite rapidly off the A500 to that junction. So that would be my only concern, really. Otherwise, um, I totally welcome the business down there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fia. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I, I, I think highways is the only matter at stake here. Um, my concern, I think, is less about the flow of stuff and, and the, the hammer that the road surface might take at this point in time. But given that the Highways Authority has had sight of this, uh, I think it would be very difficult to sustain an objection on those grounds. And therefore, um, although I am slightly annoyed that this is now a retrospective thing and um, that, you know, we, we should be sending out a message that we do not approve of retrospective um, applications. Nonetheless, in these circumstances, I'm happy to remove the recommendations printed. Thank you, Councillor Fia. Have we got anybody speaking? Councillor Gordon. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I read the transport statement with with great interest, um, but my confidence in it was shaken a bit because um, I live very close to this to this site and I know the local bus route really well, and the details given in the statement just aren't correct. You know, certainly it's accessible, but you try getting a a, a bus um, from either um, um, Newcastle or Hanley after seven o'clock. And you'll be waiting a very long time. And we haven't had a 4B four, uh, four bus, Chairman, for, for some considerable time. So I don't know who sort of checks these things, but I wish they'd get them right. Because to be honest, you sort of sit there and you read these things and you think, well, if they got that wrong, could other things be wrong? 
But having said that, Chair, I uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't push that as a, an objection. It's just a, a bit annoying when you notice that some of these details on these reports just aren't right. Thank you, Councillor Gordon, and, and I, sh I share some of your concerns that some of the uh, the transport statements um, concerning public transport are not as accurate as we've seen uh, recently with um, the Baldwin's Gate application um, and many others that uh, we could draw upon. That maybe we can we can press for that to uh, be more robust in the future from those that authored such things. Um, I can't see any more hands being raised. We've had a proposal to um, to approve the application. I'm quite happy to uh, to second that from the chair. Um, and I share, Councillor Fear, your comments regarding the retrospective uh, nature of applications. But I think in this case, um, I think I'd be minded to look favourably more on this application, being that it's providing uh, such economic uh, benefits um, to the. Um, vicinity and the neighbours of Newcastle and beyond. Um, so I'm quite happy to put that through um, as a second uh, uh, to your proposal, Councillor Fia. So we've had a proposal and seconded. Uh, can I see a show of hands, please, in favour of this? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. That item is approved. Item five on your agenda, application for other development, Car Park Meadows Road, Kidsgrove. Uh, this item includes a supplementary report. Have we, got a rec have we got a presentation on this? We have a presentation, councillors, on this. So this application is a, a resubmission for planning permission for the variation of an approved scheme for the demolition of existing workshops and garages on the car park site at Meadows Road in Kidsgrove. Members uh, may recall that the original application for the redevelopment of the site came to committee in October of last year and um, was subsequently approved subject to conditions. Just to refresh memories, this is the site as existing, showing the car park and the garage buildings as viewed from Meadows Road. And then just a slightly different angle looking up, up Meadows Road, you've got the buildings here on the left hand side and the garaging that's to, to be demolished. So here we've got the proposed site plan as now proposed with this application. The alteration is to this northern edge of the building here um, at the very, very rear of the site. So these are the floor plans that were previously approved. So on the ground floor, there was a, a crash area, sort of multifunctional space leading out to an outdoor play area. And on the elevations, this created almost a cantilevered roof at the rear. So um, the outdoor play area was to be beneath this, this first floor element here. What's now being proposed and what we're asking members to, to look at is the extension of the ground floor building. Um, the play area, the outdoor area is no longer proposed. It's now proposed to extend the, the building to meet the limits of the first floor and that would provide a, an integral bin store and a plant room. So as you can see, it's this, this elevation here in filling this corner of the building in, in materials um, to match, which were conditioned to be read previously, and that, that has carried through. Thank you. Um, so there's no, no extension to the functional floor space of the building, so there's no further concerns in terms of parking or highway safety requirements. The Highway Authority are again satisfied with the proposals subject to conditions to secure the, the access arrangements and, and appropriate signage. Visually, the um, amendments neatly infill that, that rear area of the building in a, in a space that's not visually prominent from, from wider vantage points. Officers consider that it will continue to be of an appropriate design and the condition previously requested by members has been repeated to request the use of red brickwork as opposed to the buff brickwork that's shown in the drawings. So the principle of the development and all other technical matters have previously been accepted um, and officers are happy with, with the design changes now proposed. 
Thank you for that presentation. Um, just to remind members and to reiterate that um, this has been given prior approval and we debated at length the, uh, the outside appearance of the building. Um, we're here tonight to just decide on the minor amendments in this application. Um, I open it up to you for comment. Councillor Fear. Once again, Mr Chairman, I, it's, uh, it, I, I don't think it's a particularly handsome building, but that's not the issue that's sitting here before us tonight. Um, we are debating one small um, amendment. I can't see that there is any good objection to that amendment, and, and therefore I'm happy to move this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Fear, to move that. Do you have any members wishing to speak? I don't see that, so I'm happy again to second from the chair the proposal made by Councillor Fear that we approve this application as printed in the report. Can I see a show of hands for those in favour of this? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much, councillors. Item six on the agenda is an old favourite. Uh, five Bogs Cottage Keel. Are there any new reports to be submitted? No new reports are to be submitted tonight. Are we content to keep this on the agenda in two months' time? I see a lot of nodding of heads, so I take that as sent. That item will appear again in two months' time. I'm not aware of any uh, exempt information um, tonight. I'm not a, a made aware of any urgent business. Is there any urgent business? Any urgent business? Okay, in that case, I'll uh, call the meeting to a close. Thank you for, very much for your participation tonight, however brief it is, and uh, I wish you a safe and warm journey home. Thanks once again. Thank you. Good night. I'll call the meeting to a close.